The Leggett Podcast is sponsored by Montrex. Montrex is a cutting-edge sportswear brand empowering athletes across the world, built to enhance performance and give you confidence to go the extra mile. They've got some of the most incredible products at montrex.com. There is a link below this video. Click the link and at checkout, enter the code LEGIT for 15% off your order. That's L-E-G-I-T, all one word. Everything from jackets, cargo pants, gym tops, t-shirts, uh, running jackets, running pants. Everything is on their website and they sponsor some of the most incredible athletes. Everything from UFC fighter Leon Edwards and a good friend of the podcast, uh, boxer Jazza Dickens. So click the link below, use the code LEGIT at checkout for 15% off your order. Leggett Podcast with myself, Tom Wigden. <laughs> it's me, Andy Grant. It's me, Jordan Neal. I apologise first and foremost because everyone's listening to this on a Monday morning. Sometimes it's motivational, sometimes it's emotional, sometimes it's inspiring. Today it's it's three lads getting pissed it's on a Friday spiring, night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just charged up. Everyone's yeah. charged. I'm, I'm three pints of Guinness in and ready to talk shy for an hour. I feel rusty, I said before. I feel like I haven't been here in a while, but it's good to be back. People have missed you. People have missed you, I Tom. I don't believe that for a second, but... I genuinely, I've mm-hmm. had messages saying, mm-hmm. where's Tom? Really? Yeah. Oh, right. There might have been even been a couple of public comments, but I've definitely had messages personally on social media saying, where's Tom? Right. Alive yes. and well. <laughs> yeah. <Let's be> back. <laughs> <laughs> Still kicking. So we, we thought for this episode, first and foremost, as you know, Montrex, the main sponsors, the only sponsors, um, 15% off if you want their merch. We can't get enough of it, to be honest, lads, can we? They've been very good to us, supplied us with loads of merch. That's all I wear nowadays, and other boys do too. If you want to get involved, it's 15% off. They've just launched all the caps, which I will be messaging then after this to say, send us some, please. But, um, yeah, get on the Montrex. And they've also been kind enough to give us a £250 voucher for the latest competition. You need to be subscribed to the YouTube channel, sponsored on both, uh, and sorry, also following Montrex and the Lego podcast on Instagram to be able to a chance of winning. But yeah. Click the one. fucking subscribe button as well on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. Jesus but you know what, hey, on that song, and be honest, you know when you watch YouTube channels or like or watch videos, do you like them? Do you actually click the like button and no. click subscribe? If they say, give us a smash that big like button, I, I do, yeah. No, I don't. But I subscribe to what I like. Like, I'm probably subscribed to 15 channels, I reckon. Hmm. Like only stuff yeah. that I'm going back to like on a weekly basis. So. See, I feel like a hypocrite. I say to everyone, please subscribe to the channel, but then I never subscribe and I never like videos. So Wait, I realised the other day how much time I spend on YouTube. You know, mm. very bad. Like just everything I get or every bit of content I digest, whether that be like boxing, UFC, or whatever, it's all on YouTube. There's the odd little like Spotify, Apple Podcasting. But most of it is YouTube. I know, to be fair, I, I drive and just put YouTube on the side, like, obviously mm. leave it there on the side and yeah. then listen to stuff, listen to podcasts on YouTube. What an invention. So one one thing we are pushing, ladies and gents, is um, the subscription on YouTube. We want to try and hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube by January as, as we have some big ideas. So <laughs> if you haven't subscribed and you do enjoy the content, please give that little button a click. And the reason for this podcast is... Is we wanted to just, yeah, get together. I always enjoy these pods. But, uh, Tom, you have been away a lot. You yeah. have been a busy boy. Yeah. So um, we thought, get together. And, um, I think the last one we did was probably like eight weeks ago, was it? All, mm. all us lot. Yeah. I revealed, a little bit, <laughs> I revealed a little bit more than I probably should. But Mate, that was common. For anyone who hasn't, who's, doesn't know what Tom's on about, Tom referred to shitting himself <laughs> at a house party. <laughs> And then he, he rang me the next day and went, oh, I don't know whether I should have said that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what it is? It's it was right. the first time I took ecstasy. It was the bit that got me. <laughs> it was the second, it was the, the oh, second oh, time. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> no, I do remember thinking that, you know when you you just, mate, you forget sometimes, don't you? Like, yeah. I'm talking now, I forget that. Oh, X thousands people, of people. Yeah. 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 Do you know what I mean? It's like you always, the the internet is, doesn't seem real sometimes, does it? So, I think the first few times you're conscious of, that oh, yeah. and then as soon as it's like as soon as you come comfortable in your seat it should, you could say it, yeah. yeah I think though as well one one of the reasons I like doing it we used to is um, we speak about all the time the, the Joey Diaz the Theo Vaughn those kind of podcasts where these American comedians just sit there they, they drink they might get high they might do whatever and just talk shite yeah. and I watch them and I think they're hilarious yeah 
I really do laugh so hard at some of the stories they tell. And yeah. I think they can get away with it because they class themselves as comedians. Oh, fuck Do you know it, then I'm I mean? classing myself yeah. as a comedian. Then. No, I know, I'm yeah. going to stand up short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, we suddenly, if we suddenly started talking, like, because they can say pretty much anything they want, can't they? Yeah. Purely because they yeah, have because that. Like, oh, it's comedian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mate, I love, I, I said to you before, um, there's a new film coming out and it's got Joey Diaz in. It's called The um, Something in Newark. It's a Sopranos prequel. I mean, that um, was one of the... Uh, we put out a little Q&A and that was one of the things people wanted us to talk about. It's called The Many Saints in New York. Uh, oh, sorry, The Many that. Saints in Newark. I've seen that, yeah. It looks fucking brilliant. Just, I'd love to be a stand-up comedian. Best job going. It'd be but, hard, like, but you, you can just get away with whatever you want. Do you know want. what? It'd be, it'd be so hard at the start where you just oh, think yeah. to yourself, like, am I, am I doing the right thing here? Like, I'm going to gigs. There's mm. 12 people in the audience. Imagine um, doing your, your routine. And like everyone's just having a beer, just like talking, and you're just there. Yeah. yeah. But I reckon there's such a hard time. Like, you know, you yeah. go to like some random gig in Oldham mm. on like a Thursday. The worst above thing above a is pub. Though, loads of them people are proper funny. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But you know what, though, without trying to like, you know, give it the old 11 a reef thing, you know, I've, um, for anyone who doesn't understand that joke, is it, have you heard that? That's, no. Yeah, when you say you're going to do something better. Yeah, Tenerife, Tenerife 11 a reef. No, I never heard Come on, that. Tom, that was I the first reach, joke. didn't reach Parbol, that <laughs> <laughs> That was the first joke of me, comedy career. Um, no, I, I genuinely feel the motivational speaking was a little bit like that. The first talk I'd done was in a little church hall for, like, five old women. And I'm pretty sure one of them fell asleep throughout it. <laughs> and you're, like, there thinking... Just, just oh. drifted. You have to start, <laughs> I mean, you have to start somewhere, but it's quite similar to what you do, actually, but... Public speaking, when people aren't asked, must be fucking hard. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Public speaking is hard enough when you've got a room engaged with you. Mm. Mm. Public speaking, which what stand-up <clears throat> comedy essentially is, when actually people haven't paid to see you, you don't really care if you're on or off. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. big time. Well, that's what some of the speaking gigs I go to. Like, I mean, thankfully, I mean, I back myself. I'm, I, would, I would say I'm good at my job. But that essentially is, you know, your boss is telling you, right, we've got this guy coming in to talk, yeah. you've got to be here. It's a bit different than paying 30 quid to go and see someone you want to see. Mm. Mm. So That's you, what I mean. you've you... got to win the room yeah. over a little bit. So I feel like, again, I'm not... But in my presentation, to be fair, I, there are a few funny bits, and I, I think that's what's given me the little bug to go, hmm. Mm. I, I could do this. Yeah. I could I would... give this shot. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine the other end of the spectrum, though, where people are paying 40, 50 quid to come <clears> see... <throat> You imagine being in that position where you know everyone in this room's come to see the jokes I'm about to say. Yeah, that must. And be it's hard serious. to like you've got to think you got to book time off work maybe, mm. or you've got to find childcare, then yeah. you've got to fucking find parking. Mm. Like it's not eat like everyone <clears throat> in that room's there for you to give them yeah. a good night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what one of the proudest moments <clears throat> of my speaking career was? I was uh, got asked to speak at the uh, the Hay Literacy Festival. It's one of the biggest festivals in the UK, and I went down there, and I'd never spoken to um, in like a ticketed event. And I went down there, and I was like, they would treat me like a bit of a celebrity, like, I'm just, there's no one, do you know what I mean? And I turned up, and they were like, oh, Andy, you can come through here. And in the in the green room was Dara O'Brien, and um, the woman off Gavin and Stacey, the Welsh girl. Oh, was it, yeah? Yeah. I forget her name, but she's hilarious. Yeah, she's hilarious. Yeah. They were both there, and they both had books out. That's what it was, anyone who had a book was on this group. <clears> so uh, I'm there, and I didn't have the balls to go and speak to them. So when we were in this room... And the woman's come over and she's, how are you feeling and stuff? They were all really lovely with me. And I said, to be honest, I feel a bit out of place. I said, you know, people have obviously booked tickets to come and see these guys. I said, I'm more scared that no one's going to have booked tickets to come and see my, to my show. Because you had to, it was a festival and you had to book tickets to each performance, mm. if you like. And she went, oh, it'll be fine. And I kind of wanted her to say, oh yeah, you've got X amount of tickets. And she went, I'm sure it'll be fine. And we were walking. And I was like, oh my God, like, I'm, I'm so worried. Because it was like, I think, I mean, I didn't get paid nothing, but I think they were charging like a ten or a ticket or whatever. And she went, oh, you'll be fine. And, and mate, there was a queue of people to come and like see me. And I was like, oh my God, people actually like have looked at the brochure and thought oh, that might be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it was like one of the proudest things of just to know that yeah. people have paid a ten or it might have been a five, I don't know. It's cool. Man. And yeah, mate, I felt really, and then afterwards I got to sign the book. And I was in a, like, my stall was there with all my books I was signing, <clears throat> and the girl off Gavin and Stacey was next to me. 
That's my, cool. Isn't my it? queue went down after like 15 minutes. She was like <laughs> yeah, still there an hour later. Like, but, um, but I mean, you know, it was my small little snippet into like that. And it was you were really... going to do it with Chris, Chris Cairns, weren't you? Yeah, Chris sat down with me. To be fair, mate, without dropping a name, um, I'm doing what you're half. I've done dropped a few names, not to pick them up. But uh, <laughs> mate, yeah, I speak to uh, John Bishop quite a bit, you know, and he, um, mate, he said like, he'd, he'd go for a beer, like, and we could do like a set. Sh- yeah, like, yeah, Chris Cairns and, and John both said like they'd help me. But again, I'm not funny. I don't make. What I do think, stand-up comedy? Yeah. Oh, we don't But you, you're funnier than me. I think you're fucking hilarious. But <laughs> you are very quick, aren't yeah. you? You're fucking you like that. You take after your half fella. I think you. I think you're half fella. <laughs> no, I think I think your old man is hilarious. Oh, and I'm funny, I'm not that type of funny. But I've just got loads of funny stories. I couldn't structure a show. Like, I I don't <laughs> I don't know how to get to the end of a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Well, like, mate, you should do it. You know, yeah. yeah, I think you'd be really good at it, George. As well, yeah. that, we started off talking about Andy. Andy's getting into comedy, and then Tom was like, "Yeah, George, you should do it, George." Yeah, I'm going on tour. <laughs> okay, yeah, Andy. Yeah. Yeah, but no, which different to comedy, though, isn't it? No, I don't I know. Think, if you could, yeah. yeah, if you could structure it, though, yeah, I think it's the only thing I'd enjoy is like going around the crowd. No, just picking on people. See, that's where you'd be good and yeah. I'd be shit. Because if someone come at me, I'd be like, yeah, you, you, you wouldn't fucking your ma. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't know what to say. <laughs> no, but yeah, comedy's, comedy's so hard because how many of them get paid any money? Do you know what I mean? I know you talk about like the likes of John Bishop and all these people, but there's people grafting at the, you know, any pub around Liverpool doing it and getting paid nothing, do you know what I mean? When it's we so had him on, Tom, when we spoke to him, he started off, didn't he, just grafting, just... Yeah. You know. I think one of his gigs wasn't it um, <clears throat> one of the very first gigs he was in um, I mean he told that funny story when he was above a um, he was going to a pub but he got cancelled and it all got changed because oh, they were yeah. having yoga a yoga night <laughs> 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 that's comedy in itself isn't it yeah <laughs> you know, like, well, did he like cancel them or something because like they had the Pilates in the local, well, local village or yeah something it was or like something. a village hall or something yeah. wasn't it or above a pub and something. but I always say like the people who were very just people who are very good, like John Bishop and all those comedians, just, you know, when they go to an airport or when they go to any public place out, they're just constantly looking for things, aren't they? Like, yeah. their eyes are always open thinking, can I put, how can I put that, you know, with, with that scenario I saw, can I, how can I play That's that? That's why I love Peter Kay, because he describes he things that you see every day and you think to yourself, oh, I'm funny, that. Yeah. But then he brings it to life, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I love, like, people watching is one of my favourite things in the world. I mean, I will mm. sit and watch people. But that's why I feel confident in the stories I've got, because, obviously, as we all know, my life's been mad. Yeah. Like, I know, I've known some crazy, like, people and, like, mad injuries and mad circumstances. Mm. You know, I found myself in a in a bloody green room at Lewis Hamilton before, and Prince Harry before the BBC Sports Personality Year Awards. And, and like, lads are like... Getting the stump out, rubbing it against fucking Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, man, like, mate, you haven't told me that stu- story. It's just like loads of mad things like that where like Lewis, and, like Lewis is there in the room. He's like tiny, and he's you're just like go on. And say then ten minutes like yeah. just like, lads are just swamping random and stuff, and then like Prince Harry's there and just like mad stories about lads taking you know he was going out with like Nicole Scherzinger at the time and stuff, and lads are saying things that you think you probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> yeah, to, you know, all that kind of stuff. You just think it's when was this? That's cool. Mate, we, we got to go on the... Uh, yeah, we, we come into the green room and Prince Harry came in to see us and we, we, we all won an award. Louis Hamilton. Louis Hamilton. Lou, Lou it was Hampton, in Liverpool. It? Was it, yeah? Yeah, it was in Liverpool. We, uh, mate, I was on the stage, like, on telly and stuff. It was mad. Yeah, that's what I mean. I've just got loads... Of, I forgot half the stories, mate. I had a mad... I know you've wrote a book, but you've got about... I reckon you've got three in there, you know? Mate, <laughs> you know what was really funny when I wrote the book? I wrote down loads of things which I thought would be interesting. And I none of them got in the book. <laughs> oh God, cut! I I appeared on um, <laughs> and credits. I appeared on Red or Black to win. I was like two questions away from winning the million quid with Ant and Dec. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Where's that mate, episode? Yeah. Is it oh, Ed? Oh mate, I've done it. Is it Ed? That episode? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is it? Mate, that's a mad story. What quest- so, go on, what question did you get wrong? No, so what happened is um, <laughs> I can just go vision to you on the cube and. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one I would love to go on. Oh, no, I mean, get on this way. Life, give you that. No, that's, but that's what I mean. I'm not funny. But I've just had a funny life. And, mate, I was in, again, <laughs> you're not even going to leave the story, mate. I was in Vegas, right? And I got a phone call and they said, hi, is this Andy? I said, yeah. He went, I've obli- I believe you've applied for red or black. And I said, yeah. He was like, you're all right for 10 minutes to answer some questions. I said, yeah, okay. I said, I'm in Las Vegas at the minute, but I said, if you don't mind your phone bill being too high, then, yeah. 
He was like, oh my God, well, okay. And he starts asking me questions and he was asking me questions like, Cattle are hungry. Do you like to gamble? <laughs> Yeah, like, do you like to gamble? I was like, well, I'm in Vegas, yeah. so, you know. So, yeah, do you want me to accumulate the tips? <laughs> yeah. 25 quid and yours. That's what we're like. <laughs> we're talking, anyway, mate, I'll, I'll make it through. Uh, I'll make it through, go on, get on to the live shows and all that. And um, I don't know if you remember, it was called Red or Black, Ant and Dec hosted it. I kind of do remember it. And yeah. you, essentially, there's eight people, and you just have to pick Red or Black. Like, that was it. It was like five, six years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 It, was like yeah. Mil- it was like just before like million pound drop on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, um, yeah, mate, I got on the show, was on the show and all kinds, and I, you know what happened? And you know, I love dogs, and this is what fucking breaks my heart. Got through the first round, cool. But you know what was weird? I had this, I just, so I kind of merging two stories into one. I was in Vegas when I obviously got the call, and I said to the lad, I've told this story on the pub before, so I won't go into it, but I had this feeling I knew I was going to win 10 grand. And at the, on the flight, I was like, you know, you fill in a visa, an Esther form, and it, has to, it says you're coming into the country with more than $10,000. And I joked at the lads, and I was like, I'm going to need to fill this in, because I'm fucking taking Vegas big. And they're like, yeah, yeah, all right. And anyway, we partied, we had a great time. And then on the last day, I won 10 grand in Vegas. And... I was fucking like swinging, you know, fucking dog with two dicks. I was like, fucking told you all, don't fucking, you know, and I won 10 grand. So I had this same mindset. I just had this weird feeling. I thought, I'm going to win a million quid here. And it was such a strong belief. I was going to win a million quid. And I got through the first round, got through the second, got to the third. And do you remember Pudsy of Britain's Got Talent, that dog? Yeah, yeah. So didn't the, fucking win. The girl, yeah, Pudsy yeah, won the, the girl. girl. Yeah, so, yeah, the girl. So there the was girl, this yeah. girl with Pudsy, and they'd done a routine, and basically you had to watch this routine, and there was like loads of reds and loads of blacks, and then at the end, the Ant or Deck asked the question, and you had to fucking say red or black. So they do this routine that goes on for like, you know, a minute, two minutes, and then it was like a red letter box, there was a black car, you know, a guy in a red suit, a woman in a red suit. Oh, like so you've got to th- count how many red things. Yeah. And then at the end, they yeah. said, like, the, anyway, at the end, they said, what colour was the, the man's bow tie? Oh. And I was just, like, fucking didn't have a clue. And was just, like, uh, and everyone else had, like, guessed or, or, or knew. And I was just got lumbered with, like, black. I think it was red. And I fucking went out. And I was just, like, it was weird. I genuinely couldn't believe... Because I'm, I'm quite, like, my mindset, I think I've got a quite a strong mindset, and I uh, I believe in, like, the law of attraction and stuff. I don't believe that if I think I'm going to win the lottery, I'm going to win the lottery, but I do believe that if, you know, you... And I don't know, I've always been, if I've had a feeling, it's always normally came through and stuff. Like, I've always had this feeling, I know, I, I know I'll be all right. Any time yeah. I've went through a tough time, I've thought, nah, I'll be all right. And I had this same weird feeling, I thought, I'm going to win a million quid here. <laughs> I genuinely, it was weird. I knew I was going to win this million. And there was a crowd there, everything. Yeah, like my dad yeah. and sisters in the audience. Every, yeah, it was mad. Yeah. Can you see how people get the answers? You know when pe- people ask, like, on when Jeremy Clarkson asks, like, on who wants to be a millionaire, on it, and they ask, like, a simple question, and yeah. fucking people... Yeah. Can you see how people do that? You know, when the, the audience yeah. is there, oh, yeah, yeah, staring yeah. at them and... I mean, this was a little bit different because it was, like, something... Yeah, yeah, of course. But, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, could, I could say we could freeze a little bit, yeah. 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 I've been in the audience at Jeremy Carlin. You know? Have you? Hundreds. That's yeah. better than my story, that. <laughs> and it was the. F- it in was Salford. Yeah? Yeah. They were quite in Salford, didn't they? To go on this Don't know. <laughs> it was boss, though. It was an unbelievable day. So, one fella was accusing his wife of, like, doing all mad stuff, and that was hilarious. But then it was like a celebrity special. It was a fella who'd. I forget his name, but he lived with Michael Jackson. <laughs> and was basically saying that Michael Jackson had done. Paedophilia. Mad stuff too. Yeah. yeah. Non stuff. Yeah. Oh. And it was just, and I, that's what I was in the canal for. <sighs> it's a fun and everyone. I made the cut. Do you you know, could see you clapping. So like, <laughs> do you know when the thing was on, like, and it flipped to the crowd, just me slap bang there, going pedo. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But, you know, it was like for the yeah, like this fella like stormed off. His missus was cheating on him and stuff. He, to me. he gets a lot of shit, Jeremy Carr, don't you know? I mean, I only went for laugh like a dog. I thought it was great. Yeah. Well, it was a mad experience. 
Yeah. So they round you all up in the studios, and then it's literally pretty much what they yeah, do they on they TV. Yeah, they to heckle and stuff. Do they? Yeah. Do they? Yeah. Like, Come on, get it up. <laughs> and like, it shot. was like the Jerry Springer of the yeah. UK, wasn't it? You know, like, there's a point they didn't do this with me, but, like, they would do it. You know, there's a point, like, bring them back out and all that stuff. inside <laughs> <laughs> it. Do they? Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, it attracts some mad people that, like... Yeah. yeah, someone committed suicide, didn't he? Mm. And then that's I think that's what brought yeah. it into like. Yeah, because obviously rookies. Jeremy Kyle just built up this thing of like, you can do the slightest thing wrong, and I'm just gonna nail you for it. Yeah, <laughs> but, but you know what I think? Thinking about that, though, what 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 I think brought his character in, and again, I'm not hundred percent on this, but I think he's had a few issues in the past. I think with gambling, it might yeah, have been. Yeah, yeah. He's back um, into all sorts Yeah, yeah, I've seen him Was all he, day. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. always at like the big meetings. Yeah, um, and I just think it's. Maybe we're living in a, in a strange world where there's cancel culture and it's like, I always think you've got to be pretty ballsy to call someone out on something from a long time ago. Mm. You know, yeah. if you, for example, turned around to me, Tom, and went, ah, there's a fucking podcast of you 18 months ago saying that you fucking don't like whoever. Fucking hell, you better be pretty, pretty concrete yeah, saying of your own self yeah. that you've never done anything wrong oh, yeah, to call yeah. someone else out and even if it's not 80 months even if it's 30 years ago for, mm. or like when things yeah. were said 30 yeah. years ago in like completely different era completely I different time I said this time. the other day like uh, loads of like sports people are getting done <clears> the <throat> tweets they did when, in like mm. 2012 and stuff if you so I'm like I'm t- I think I'm 29 now if I was t- 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 <laughs> how many beers have you had <laughs> do you know if you went back to when I was 20 though I was I was an idiot, you know. Yeah, I mean? yeah, I just said fucking saying, all sorts. I, I'm, not yeah. was. I'm not saying I was a bad person, but I said some stupid stuff. Probably acted stupid. And if you brought that back up constantly, hundred percent, yeah. And I was in a, I would be probably, you know, shamed, yeah. Yeah, but like everyone's just, got secrets. Yeah, everyone's got things. Like, they, just like, they, you know, yeah, yeah. Not sometimes everyone's... you have stupid views, or yeah, of you know, course, you, yeah. You get involved with stupid stuff, or you say stupid things. But I just don't understand why someone has a little bit of success and everyone's like, what did they do in 2012? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Fine mine, tweets. Yeah. And... George's doing well now, but did you see him in 28? <laughs> yeah. That's why I've never had Facebook. Just yeah. in case. Have you never had Facebook now? Never, ever. I think I had... I don't know, I think I had an account when it first came up, but then it shut it down. I've never had it since. Mm. Just, just... Some of those memories come up on Facebook and I just delete them. By the way, didn't you just say 28? 2008. 2008. <laughs> I remember. I remember when. The, I remember when you. When we had um, fucking. Um, oh, when we had. <laughs> when we had Rob Pope and you went. One thousand five hundred five thousand five thousand eight hundred forty nine thousand. Lazy boy. I weren't even pissed either. <laughs> Yeah. I, t- I tried to clip a little bit of that episode up and then I was like oh my god I sound like an absolute talent I'm clipping up here that's what I like about this part though in the sense that I don't really give a fuck I know you two don't as well but it's good to not like, yeah. that's what I aspire to I aspire to be in a position where like you just you don't give a fuck like if no one can you, no one can cancel you if you like because you're not reliant on it anything takes time that though. oh yeah no, it, it takes a lot of balls as well yeah it does as well yeah. I'm only... if you say something that you can like yeah. You know, there's potentially. You see what Rogan's got after all these. Um, obviously, he's had, he's had Crown Ronnie. I mean, he got a lot of backlash. He, he did. Because yeah, he was saying like all mad stuff. Don't want if you eat this and you'll be fine and all that, money. <laughs> yeah, some you know, horse thing or something, yeah. wouldn't it? But then eat a deer's horn. You fucking. <laughs> <laughs> he was saying mad stuff. He it was. Funny. Yeah. I feel rough. <laughs> 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 you know, you know what? I mean, I, I, I'm not even going into the Crown thing. No. no. But you know, you yeah, know what? Yeah. I do think is. Um, where I do feel for people is, and I don't know whose fault it is, and I'm not going down any conspiracy fucking route, but but I feel sorry for people because there's just that much information out there. Yeah. And if you were a little bit in the middle, not anti-vax, not pro-vaccine, not like, just were a bit like, oh, what should I do? You're fucked. Yeah. Like, you are fucked. You know, you... The world's just tribal now, though. You can't, you can't be in the middle. You've either no. got to be like, yeah. you've got to be an extremist, or you've got to be like completely the other side. Like for example, with the vaccine, I don't want to talk about it much, but I am pretty much like that. I'm not anti-vax, but I also don't think it's like the big answer. Mm. But like for me to ask a question, for example, I've had the first one, I haven't had the second one yet. But for me to ask a question. Yeah, you're not allowed. Yeah, but people are then like, why, why you, why you, you don't want to get it? You hate all that. Yeah. I like, no, I, don't, I just want to like, just ask this question. Yeah. And I think the world's so bad now because 
you can't ask questions because no. it's either you're in this camp or you're in that camp. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it's and like the mask like, thing, yeah. and then it's very political, isn't it? And like, yeah. Especially it's in the got US, weird, US. and I, I, I do feel sorry for people who are a bit, you know, a bit uneasy and a bit, you know, you see these stories. You know, it might be like one in a million who got a bad reaction and stuff like that, and it's awful and stuff. But it kind of gets promoted in a certain way. So you got like Brazil. I just sort of just cancelled loads of vaccines of certain people. So if you see a country saying, oh, we're not letting our people get this vaccine. Mm. You're going to be a bit like, oh, well, God, hang on, why, why is our country doing it? Right. But yeah. the second you have that doubt and you ask questions, it's like, you're selfish, you yeah. get, get vaccinated, it's and the it's the like, It's the misinformed the uninformed argument, though, isn't it? Because, like, obviously, if you don't, get, if you don't engage in it, you do, you do miss out. But, for example, I could write up now a tweet saying, fucking Brazil have cancelled so-and-so, or 50,874 people have died of whatever. And I can push that out and someone will retweet it and then someone else will retweet it and then someone else will post it and it might not be true. So yeah. imagine the amount of shit that you're seeing on a exactly, daily basis yeah. that is just completely fabricated. Yeah, complete nonsense. On, yeah. And that's on both sides, by the way. That's, 100%, on, yeah, yeah. that's on the side of this is all safe and it's on the other side as well of... Tom's on a belt. I'll just give, give you one. And again, before you say this argument, it can, it can be this kind this kind of argument can be said on both sides. But give the one about the Chicago shootings. Oh, it was something like um, three. In fact, I'll get the uh, get so I can get the facts right here rather than uh, it's a yeah, madness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, get some out. Fuck, fuck, that, fuck that podcast. They just spout absolute nonsense. <clears throat> Let me uh, just find it here. Well, um, yeah, no, I do find. And again, I'll just everyone. What's your opinion on that? Yeah. Uh, so it was um, 302 children have been shot in Chicago and killed this year um, and 214 children have died from COVID in the whole of the US Yeah, I don't see anyone fucking you know creating conspiracy theories about the gun crime in Chicago no bad isn't it bad and then like uh, thinking about I'm not going to say his name because then people will assume political sides but um Thingy Bobby, whoever tweeted that out, said, um, facts don't care about your feelings. Mm. So, yeah. The gun thing's mad, isn't it? Yeah, it is mad. I think it's a gun. Dude, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm a really, really chilled out I, 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 to be honest, I, you want a gun? I very rarely get angry, right? But imagine if you were one of those people, because I know them, we all know them <clears> and stuff, who are like, you know, punch balls and get hot headed. <laughs> imagine <laughs> if you've got a gun when you yeah. feel like that. Mate, America's a mad place. We went on a football trip to, uh, it's called like it's like Dallas with uh, Nosley. So we went over to this tournament and we stayed in New York, a place called Georgetown in Texas, and then in Dallas. And we stayed with this family. So you stay with like families and these people That's they, cool. They honestly were little lovely people. But like when you walk in the house there was just like in Texas, there was just guns, mm. you know, like on the wall. But it's completely normal for them, yeah. and I understand that. But when I went in as a 19-year-old kid, I was just like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Do you know and what? Like, and they, they took us out. They did, like, a bit of, like, not hunting, but they took us out, and they were, like, shooting and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. But I like deer and stuff. Yeah. And but like, Did you shoot a deer? Did the fuck, no. <laughs> like, Do you want to hold her? I'm more like, no. <laughs> His son was, like, 14. He was, like, pinging it, pinging it, it yeah. Uh, under the yard. See that dad? Like, fuck this. <laughs> well, anyway, I yeah, just leaving that out, by the way. I went to bed, like, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but what I'm trying to say is it's so normal. Yeah. It's like, it's like, who's on the phone yeah, in, the, in the UK? Do you, do you know what? Piers Morgan said it very well. He said, um, and I know some people don't like him, some people like him, but he said um, when he was in the US, he's, he was, I think he was in some LA bar with his son. His son was... 20 years old, I think five days away from being 21. Um, so, and he said, I'd have a, uh, can I get a beer? And his son wanted a, uh, a non-alcoholic beer. And the lady would not give him a non-alco- non-alcoholic beer because it had 0.5%, as mad as that sounds. It had some, some alcohol, even mm. though it was non-alcoholic, and she wouldn't serve him. <clears throat> and that same weekend <clears throat> in Nevada, there was a 12-year-old girl that shot... Mm. Um, that was on a shooting range that accidentally ha- that got given an Uzi machine gun and shot the um, the guy who was on on the range, and like they're just like com- like it's just mad comparing how mm. you can't drink mm. until you're 21 and how strict they are with that. But then like you can go to a range 
at 12 years old and shoot a machine think, gun and like oh it's just crazy you know when you question it they're like it's my right to have a gun no, the second amendments thing hmm. no nope. right <clears throat> deadly it, weapon there's, there's a bar and a uh, similar story to you i was just flew into texas and even though i'd been around guns and stuff and, and weapons and rifles i land in the texas airport whatever it's can't remember which one it was um san antonio i think it was and there was a cowboy there, like a proper cowboy. You had like it. a pistol on him, it was on his waist. <laughs> well, like flipping it around, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he went, he went while like, you flipping it, but he played. It was an instant holster. <laughs> In the airport lounge. <laughs> I swear, he had a cowboy hat on. To clear. <laughs> <laughs> no, when we come, when we come through, and he was there, you know, like people like stand with signs waiting for you. He was there with a cowboy hat on <laughs> and a little thing. Look at this sign, say cowboy. <laughs> I swear. He's got a gun. <laughs> no, he was there in, in, in his holster. And he, even though I was used to weapons and that, it was, um, it, I was still a bit like, fucking hell, that's a bit mad. Anyway, <laughs> we're in Texas. <laughs> but I, well, yeah, because he's like walking around the street. Yeah, But anyway, the point I'm getting to is, Ugh. have you been to a bar in America? And if anyone's listening, please message me because I don't want to be the only one. It's called Dick's. <laughs> have you been to it? No. Okay, so this bar, this this the hi- the idea how this, this is that like a chain, yeah, chain of bars. It's yeah. a chain of restaurants, it is. Yeah, how <clears> it works <throat> is, it. I mean, it's a great idea. You tell me whether culturally it would work in the UK, but the idea of, of dicks in the UK is, the waitresses and the waiters just be a dick, and they just give you shit, like just insult you. What fucking happens anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but mate, they come down and they're like. Hey, hey, you piece of shit, what do you want to eat today? Do they, yeah? Yeah, yeah, and they put, like, the menu there, and they're like... But they proper insult you. Like, they, if you got, like, a bad haircut, like, what the fuck is that on your head? Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Just speaking to you like this. Like, job, there, was, like, there was a girl there, like, she was a bit flat-chested, and she was like, what does the iron board want? Like, saying stuff like that, and, hey, you fat bastard, you won't want a dessert, and... Like, but they say at the start, when you walk in, they say, do you know what type of place this is? You know, you, you don't get offended. Mm-hmm. It's but a on, cracking idea, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's called dicks, mate. Yeah, Google it. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, imagine if you were a bit hot-headed <laughs> and you had a gun on you and the waitress, you'd had a bad day, had a few beers, and the waitress is calling you a fat bastard. I mean, you, it's not, oh, bad, not worth no. thinking about, is it? No. Who's fat? <laughs> <laughs> Who's fat? Yeah, what are you doing? Oh, boom! Where's my dessert? <laughs> <laughs> And it'd be like the good fella scene yeah, when he's like yeah, dance, yeah. fucking dance. It's it's fucked up, like America is fucked in that sense. Like I'll never understand guns being completely legal. Sorry, mm. like, but yeah, it's just I can understand like the twenty one for drinking and all that stuff, whatever. But no human being needs a gun in the modern world. You do not, not for day to day life. You don't know. No, what, what, I agree with shooting. You will never, and stuff you will like never and... live in a place unless you live and you are surviving off the land. Completely, one hundred percent. You do not need a gun. Something else can yeah, get yeah. you by. You can, you, if you've got a, like a home office license in the UK, you can like you can have a full on full on firearm. Yeah. But you why? just can't have a pistol because yeah. they have to have the. Like, I think after Dunblane, they made mm. them that you can't have a pistol. You I just don't have understand a... what part of your life you realise you need a gun. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. It's, I think it's more the it's it's more like it's like we said before it's more political over yeah, like it's, it's like, more like yeah, I, I just like I'm, I'm a Republican yeah. and I, I'm gonna like defend yeah, my right to yeah, bear arms isn't, yeah hundred percent woman like a, a woman politician who, who's like she carries ears to, like to work and stuff I think it's that blows it in Alaska what's her name she's mad she she will she makes all crazy videos and stuff and she's like she? she takes it into the office and stuff <laughs> <laughs> I digress. <laughs> But mate, it's like in the US, it's very everything's very political, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's either left or right, or like you know, it's either Republican or Democrat. It's like no gun. I need to like fucking carry guns all around. Do you think like we're getting a bit like this? I think it's like vaccine, no vaccine, Brexit, no Brexit. Mate, everyone in the UK hates each other at the moment. Everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you, th- there's no middle ground. There's no one who's like I'm not really that asked. Mm-hmm. It's just you either this or you that, and everyone hates you, and that's a badly unhealthy place to live. No, I agree massively, yeah. To carry on this positive chat. <laughs> of some Although, of the can I just say a statistic that I heard about um, that was a, a pro-gun statistic, which was be- only because like, you very rarely hear them. It was something crazy, like... It was in the 90%, and I'd have to properly Google it, so take this this 
statistic with a pinch of salt is that the amount of um, shootings in the US that were suicides was like 90% pistols, as in like shootings with pistols when were all suicides, like 90% yeah. of them were suicides. Surely yeah. that would depend on how many are happening, or wouldn't it? Yeah. Like Surely, ten percent of like a million is still too many, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, 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 definitely. But yeah. when you, if you want to reduce suicide, then stop everyone having a fucking gun. I know, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'd, I'd have to find what it is, but I remember thinking, fucking hell, that's a mad statistic. That. What do people ask us? <clears throat> so people wanted us to talk about which we haven't actually mentioned anything yet about petrol shortages. <laughs> Fuck that. So on a bit like it's not a bit funny or something. Well, it's not. It's not actually as we alluded to before. Well, before we got yeah. started recording, it's, it's not, not actually a petrol shortage. Is it? It's just, just a lorry driver, driver shortage. shortage. Yeah, all them foreigners who are taking our jobs. It, we should we should start at our own shortage, saying there's a shortage of uh, podcast listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Give us some, man. <laughs> Give us some. <laughs> Fuck the petrol. Yeah, yeah. Subscribe. That's the real shortage. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. So it's think... so funny though. Show them. Um, hey, there's, there's a lad I went to school with. Uh, Brad, he actually does listen. Listen, actually, mentions it. His kid goes to the same school as Sophia, and he put a thing up like the people aren't gonna see, it, but it's like fella film up like. AJ. Oh my like, god, that's like the bog roll thing, isn't it? Like, it is literally just like it's when a load of people suddenly decide to buy something. He's got like, a, like I think he's got eight cans, and he's <clears> like, <throat> like we're not like there's gonna be diesel and petrol in like a week. Just relax. Yeah, relax. So yeah, and now she's want to touch on that. I'm don't, I don't want to. No, fuck I want something positive, something funny. Or okay, Kieran, Kieran Malone, who um, obviously we had on a few weeks ago. He said sounds like a good laugh, lads. Enjoy. That's right. Um, Jordy Jones, 93, asked for another live pod. He said, I was gutted I missed the one in the beer keller. It looked a belter. It was a belter, to be fair, wasn't it? Um, that room was perfect where we did it. Uh, where it we was. should really do another live pod, shouldn't we? Mm-hmm. We've Especially kind of, before Christmas. We smashed it, to be fair. It's done really well, and we've not really the Leggett, revisited the, the Leggett. Before Christmas. When, when did we do that? June, I think. Right? June, yeah. I reckon the Leggett Christmas. Christmas Night special, out. do you reckon we should? Christmas party. Smash it out, yeah. Do you reckon? Room, yeah, 100%. What do we got? We got like... 300 odds? Eight, yeah, but like dates, you got like 18th, 11th, like one of their weekends in December. Okay. It's literally, like, so it's the 24th of September now, isn't it? So it's like three months. We well, maybe, maybe need to get it booked up quick. Okay. Jordy Jones, 93, <laughs> you've, you've set the ball in motion, maybe we'll, get it, it, we'll get it go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, orange ball... A pa- apparel said, uh, "What's your favourite pub in town?" I like Dale Street, Castle Street. Me personally, I like the Angus. I like <laughs> Rigby's. I like the Angus is boss. I like, um, yeah, that sounds very there. local radio. This isn't it. What's your favourite pub? <laughs> Welcome to ninety seven point four on FM. <laughs> it is mostly Liverpool for the moment. Yeah. So we was so about half an hour ago. That was great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, when we when. Our studios near the Baltic Market, so we like having a beer around here. But um, the, what was that a place we were botanical gin garden as we normally yeah, go cool, to? Yeah. Oh, some good pizza. Before before a pod, we get a pizza and a beer there. And they sell these. Yeah, uh, whatever yeah. they're called. Not open in winter though, is it? Um, um fucking harsh in the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maria, <laughs> Maria Gillen or Gillen uh, wants to know: Is there any pod podcast merch coming? Something we thought about, isn't it? Mm, so we just need to find the right supplier. So does anyone know anyone who does? Really, we want to do limited good. gear, don't we? Yeah, but we want good quality, good quality yeah, limited gear. Like, yeah, we don't want to do the old. You'd spend like 30 quid for a t shirt, maybe, mm. but it's like a, a decent, yeah, and it lasts fucking years. Yeah. Not like, right. So, if anyone knows any like suppliers or someone who you know <clears throat> does this stuff, then get in touch. Um, no, there's quite a few people who ask for bulk buying fuel pirates and helmets panic buying petrol. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of the questions. Hell, um, it's mad how that's just come about today, isn't it? Yeah. Do, you, do you know what I mean? Like, it's suddenly like, yeah. it's like, there's like queues in that by mine. Mad, that, isn't it? Yeah, there's a queue by two, two queues by mine as well. Um, there's a new Oasis film coming out, The Nebworth, 25 years. Have you seen it? Yeah, advertised? I've seen it advertised. Yeah, it looks fucking brilliant. That. So, were we into <laughs> Oasis, guys, and were we Liam or Noel? I'll be honest, I'll kick it off. I, at the time, wasn't massively <clears throat> Oasis. Because they're a bit before my time in the sense, well, really, not before my time, but I, I'm a kind of a late fan to Oasis. Mm. I love them now, but obviously they, they'd split up before I kind of properly got into them. Um, and since starting to get into them, I am um, much more lame. I think Noel sounds very... 
I reckon Noel's a great like songwriter, and I begin to the technicalities of it, but you only got to listen to one minute of his interview and just think, I'd rather be be with anyone else in the world but you. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know what? You know what really put me off about him is he. Um, I, I, again, someone correct me. I think me if Liam's I'm wrong. a bit of a gobshite as well. If I'm totally honest. Yeah, I don't he comes that. across like. I'm surprised they just haven't figured out, you know, how much money's involved with them two getting back together. And there's Eagle, just though, something like, that, like, do you know what I mean? Like, like, I'm writing the songs. No, I, I like well, it. Well, that's what I mean. You know what? I, I Again, this is sorry, the point I was going to make. I've heard the story that when they wrote songs, if Knowles wrote the song, he got the money for it. Yeah. Songwriters. So, so like, Knowles more, more, worth more than Liam. Oh, hold, yeah. Like, fucking hell. Treble, yeah. Horrible. Really? Fucking hell and the rest. Yeah. yeah. He's wrote songs for all sorts of people. And I think that's what's caused a lot of the... For example, Coldplay. It's that guy, um, what's his name? The, the main fella in Coldplay. It goes Chris Martin. Chris Martin. Chris Martin. He writes the songs, but I think they're all like... Mm. They all get a share. I think Oasis, it was Noel's writing mm. and Noel was getting the lion's Liam, share. Liam, I reckon Liam was good, but if I'm totally honest, like I look at him now and he's dressing the same way he was 25 years ago <laughs> and his voice is nowhere near as good as it was. <laughs> no. Do you know what I mean? And like, it just sort of feels like... <clears throat> Come on, lad. Just give it up. You know? I, know, your... I know people buy buy tickets and they're like, Liam Gallagher is bo- it's possible. Is it really that good? Or is he just a... F- your da- your dad um, did some... Was it Liam or Noel? Noel, actually. Oh, Noel. Yeah. Was it Noel? My dad's, met... got, my dad's got loads of stories like that, like the music industry and that. Fucking mad, that, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, there was a doc... Were you, were you what... into him, you know? Yeah, big Oasis. star, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I, to be honest, I do... Like, even now... A lot of Oasis songs will be in like general playlists that I'm listening to or in the car or whatever. Yeah. But I just listen to both of them and just they just do me head. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, I didn't know that about Noel. Yeah. That I'm sure it's all the right. Song, yeah. Songwriting. Oh, Mitty is worth a hell of a yeah. lot more than Liam. Hundred percent. So do can... they still get all the? Because I see they've got their own YouTube channel and stuff, and they're putting mm. stuff out. So they depends still get on, like. Depends who owns it, don't they? The, or is that the record label that will get all that money from? Like, I think it's all about rights at the end of the day. You like Spotify plays and things mm. like that. Like. I think the, uh, I think it becomes a little bit. You know, when people get famous and it becomes little rivalries, whether it's siblings or whether it's whatever. It happened with Jamie Carragher and Gary Neville the other day. You know, when kind of working class lads do well, mm. they kind of then try and have like a working class off. With each other, yeah. and I think that's what Liam and Noel are a little bit like. You know, Liam kind of tries to make out that Noel's a Tory now and doesn't care about it. And um, what is in like I had a worse upbringing than mm, you, and that, not like, some obviously they're brothers, so they <clears> both know where yeah. they come from. But I mean, like Noel's kind of like you know, I think Liam tries to make out he's still a bit of a man of the people almost, and it's he's like Noel who's sort of flat and Mayfair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You're either you're either in or you're out. That's, yeah. that's my complete stance. And, and, and I saw Carragher and Gerard the other day. Carragher, I think Neville Neville can be quite political and Gary Neville put a tweet out on a on a train saying he's um he said like, you know, what is it? It's Virgin and who's the other one? Western Avanti North Avanti Northwest and he said, you know, there's no knives and forks here or something, joke of a service or something. And then Carragher tweeted saying Oh, he just done like a, a piss take with like a knife and fork on a Virgin train. And then Gary Neville come back with, you know, you're meant to be a scouser and then the Avanti rail line is like a Tory fucking ah, contract right, yeah. on this Sun- and that. Suddenly on the fucking, yeah. And then, and then Carragher said something back to him and then I saw <clears> someone <throat> tweet them both almost and said, he's about millionaires trying to argue who's the most like... Yeah. He's, the, he's the least who's, of a millionaire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it becomes a little bit like, oh, you know. Yeah, what I are just, you doing it for? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. respect yeah. people. So, I respect, obviously, whether you have money or you don't, I just respect people who just go about it, do you know what I mean? Mm. If they if they have working class, fa- if, so, say for example, a working class person who's grown up in a working class family, then gets rich, but then just goes about the life in the way they see fit. I respect that more than a working class person getting to a position and then trying to tell everyone how working class they are. Mm. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd rather someone just, if they've got them values, then just live by them. Don't, we, yeah. don't, we don't all need to know about it. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's I what too many people try to do. They're like, I'm still sitting in, um, you know, or like, like, fuck the Tories, fuck this, fuck that. But then, like, certain parts of their life, they're not quite well, doing that. Well, it. That's, that's how, and again, the whole deeper other podcasts, but that's how, almost in a way, this country's fucked us. Because if you're, if you're from the working class and, you know, you labour, for example, and then you, you kind of do well and you've 
make a success of yourself, then it becomes like you're almost then you end up might be better off going mm. Tory. I mean, I don't know. I'm not in a position where I can go fucking. I mean, I'd like to think I never would. <clears throat> But it's like, there's this thing of like, you know, you, there's all, again, it just comes back to the divide. Mm. Okay. It's like, you're almost, oh yeah, I'm working class, but then, hang on, that tax bracket's better, I'm mm. going to fucking invest my money there, I'm going to, for example, who makes a load of money, and then, at, uh, doesn't try and protect it. Doesn't try, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then it becomes Everyone's got that, accountants who want to try and lower their tax bill, regardless so it's like, of it. You, you, can be, you can be the biggest working class scally ever who made a few million. Who is going to then go to the accountant and go, Actually, you know what? Tax, yeah, you pay, know. pay more tax. <laughs> there is a thing on the self-assessment, I think, where you cannot opt to pay yeah. more tax, I believe. I really? It comes yeah. down to wow. what, what you perceive as success, though, isn't it? Like, obviously, success can be money, but you can still be like, I think you can still be working class, not make a load of money, but still essentially be a success, do you know what I mean? Mm, yeah, of course. I think mate, it, yeah. does, it does genuinely come down to what you perceive to be successful. Is it money or is it the fact that you go home at five o'clock, you log off, and then you got your time with your family, you got every weekend with your family, you got loads of time with your kids. Mm. Your kids think you're a fucking superhero. What is your perception of success? That's yeah. why I think it's more yeah, like, yeah. is the most important oh, thing. Totally, yeah. Yeah, hundred percent, mate, yeah. And also if you if you're an incredibly kind person, you've got a hundred pounds in your bank account and then you buy rounds for people. When you become rich, you're gonna be you mm. know, incredibly kind. If you're a knobhead, when yeah, you've got no money, knobhead, yeah. then you're you know, yeah. and you get and you get 10 million, then you're going to be always being no better, aren't you? So. I think, yeah, your, your bank account doesn't determine whether you're a bell end or not. You can, <laughs> no. be, you can be rich and, you know, you can be poor. Like, and you can, if you're an idiot, you're an idiot. Yeah, regardless whether you're how much, but yeah, it doesn't matter. All that stuff wears off. That's why loads of rich people end up with no mates, because everyone just realises oh, you're a bell end. You are a bell end, actually. Yeah. Maybe we had um, a few kinds of sporting things. Um, what time are we on, Tom? Because I know you're scared of your missus. I'm not scared of my missus. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Andrew Grant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's a lovely woman. She's a lovely... <laughs> and I will be doing the dishes when I get home. <laughs> Do you know what, mate? Yeah. I thought about you the other day. I watched Step Brothers and oh, I was like, what a fucking can't. film oh, that is. Is any fucking film that sums up my life is that? <laughs> mate, I've got like go. some people opposite us that like, have just moved in, like they must be renting it and like the Be guys... careful, they might listen. No, I know. They yeah. they like Thompson must be forty odd and they would live with their parents like and they're just they're just epitome of their Living like the dream. <laughs> <laughs> I just think of stepbrothers when I look at them every single fucking time. Don't you ever look at bills though and just think them people who live at home till the forty have smashed oh, Yeah, but yeah. still because I'm paying Eon fucking <laughs> just time <laughs> chuckling when um, when uh, what's he say Dale no power tools <laughs> <laughs> okay dad it's, it's my toothbrush <laughs> but um, I love how you said it's sync for that by the way um, okay I'm finished anyway <laughs> <laughs> dad really, it's, it's gone horribly wrong <laughs> oh, 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 two things which it not genuinely Tom, what, how long have you got uh, yeah. Before we wrap this up, we're on an hour now already. I right, was we'll another t- another ten minutes before you can cry off. No, I have to go because just for people that <laughs> because I'm I'm, <laughs> she I'm away. The door. <laughs> <laughs> I won't get no <laughs> I'm away for a week. Uh, paramotoring, paragliding. Yeah. So. so you're gonna come back like a whiz in the sky. Yeah, I'll be flying and zapping about in the sky like oh wiggy will. Nice. <laughs> Wait, I just want. How did you sign up to that? Like, what was the thinking? Uh, mate, I signed up for age at um, uh, I've always oh. wanted to do it. I've seen it when like some people used to come over our house, like just doing it. Where, you know, like very, you know, like very calm, late summer evenings where it's like boiling hot, but like really calm, and they come over. Jordan and just, won't remember them. He's normally in the beer garden, pissed us yeah. apart. You're just gonna roll up the engine. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, you know when, like a really calm summer's evening, like where it's just no wind, nothing, like boiling hot, and they used to come over my house, and I was just like, I fucking want to do that, it looks so cool. And they come over, like, three or four of them, and I was like, yeah, I want to do that. <laughs> Give me a year, boys. <laughs> yeah. Is up there? Yeah, yeah. up there, yeah. Lisbon, Wait. Portugal. Well, on en- Sunday. Because people have been asking where have you been, so you're not stepping back, you're just, you're just busy. Just bit, Yeah, just fucking busy with work. Work's been mad, busy with, um, <clears throat> like I was on holiday last week, this week and then going to Portugal Sunday there and then US for a week and a half and then yeah just busy with you busy know where's a good point to maybe finish on last five so minutes five ten minutes go on 
Because after you do your Portugal trip, you yeah. come back like a ninja flyer. Yeah. Where are you going? Vegas. Vegas, baby. Vegas, I've baby. never been e- either. I said to you boys, never been. Man, if you La- come back, I'll be surprised. <laughs> Vegas, Vegas is going to make an honest man of them. I know. Man, it, very, very lucky in the sense that obviously now they've opened up travel uh, in November, but I'm travelling in October. We've got a... Uh, sounds very exciting, but we've got an a, a, uh, exemption to travel through work. So land in New York, Saturday the 23rd of October. Straight on the Raz. Airplane <laughs> 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 mode. He's got loads of, you got loads of important meetings in Jordan, like straight to no, the straight, Literally, yeah, Saturday, Sunday in New York, Monday got a meeting in New York in the morning, then then drive from New York to Boston, which I think is three and a half hours drive. Boston meeting in the uh, Tuesday morning, then fly from Boston, the flight's booked at one o'clock, from Boston to Philadelphia, meeting in the afternoon in Philadelphia. I'll go and do the steps. Yeah, yeah the steps. Um, a guy By the way, I, can I just, can I just uh, take a quick not to try and go on, um, yeah. hijack your story? I fell over a girl from New York. Did you? An actress, yeah, from New York. Sounds like a song. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what? She, I want, she, was, she was a singer. So I met, I met her in Washington. Oh, like Broadway or something like that? Yeah, well, not yeah. Broadway, yeah. She sang uh, Frank Sinatra. Fucking hell. Who's the, who's the woman who sang Frank Sinatra? Um, not Nina Simone, no. I don't know. But she sang it, and she was on it. She was, <clears throat> she was like, gigging around all the US. I was in Washington. She was. We had, like, this, like, three-week holiday romance. Lovely. Yeah. That makes you fucking... <laughs> Bang. Fire. That's another you... fucking podcast. <laughs> was she a fire? She's electric. Yeah, she was on Unreal. Unreal. And then a guy who I know through the old through my old podcast stories in business, who's a um, police officer in Philadelphia um, police department. I'm gonna meet up with him. So wow. that'd be pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah, send cool. send him an email. Uh, and then so that's Tuesday. And then Wednesday, Columbus, Ohio. Then from Columbus, Ohio, Wednesday afternoon, drive to Indianapolis. Wednesday afternoon. Uh, Thursday, Indianapolis. Then Thursday afternoon, uh, Bloomington, Indiana. Then fly to Vegas. Then no Sunday. one's asked about your itinerary until you got to Vegas. Work. <laughs> Work. Oh, and then Vegas. So I booked the win as of your recommendation. Yeah. I was that's, gonna I was gonna book so. um, Bellagio just because everyone. No, just go to Bellagio. You don't have to. Yeah, yeah just go. Yeah. That's where I will be ten grand, you know, in the Bellagio. You was it? Yeah. Yeah. And bet a little bit. Free drinks, all night. Yeah, so we need to give but some... What, yeah, what's a little bit? Yeah, let's let's oh, let's spend the last... $20? The end of the... $30 on whatever's on the TVs? And, no. Really, yeah. End, end of the pod, we'll, we'll end on mine and your tips for Vegas. You've yeah. been once or twice. Once. Was that the first time you went? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I got paid to go. <laughs> I know, you've got the best story. But when, when, when was this, 2019? Oh, no, ta- yeah, Titan. Yeah, a month before the pandemic, I went to Vegas. February 2019, then. When me and my dad went for his retirement, that's you, where he yeah, went. Yeah, when Tyson, yeah, when Tyson yeah. Wilder, yeah? Yeah, so I was working Tyson Wilder. Getting yeah. paid to go to Vegas with his half fella, mm. whereas I'm fucking paying for fucking and Vegas. Got, and I got paid... So I landed back in London after a couple of days working, <laughs> <laughs> and I got paid straight away. Did you? The yeah. couple of days, like. Did they pay you sterling or US dollars? Sterling. Like, that was no most. Don't remember. Remember, remember <laughs> we had a few beers before we went and everything. It was yeah. fucking great, wasn't it? Yeah. With that little Irish bar where. Um, yeah. Oh, he, the guy there gives us free ale. Emotional few days, yeah. that. So my dad somehow knew some guy who was working in an Irish bar in Vegas <laughs> and we landed in there and he's like oh my god yeah we have free ale <laughs> did you oh, so I was going his half I kept on buying the rounds and when, before me and my half were going I was like John I'm not having you buying all this and he's like I'm not fucking paying for it it's alright mate so a few tips for Vegas um, we're in a hotel yeah so if you want to be a cheapskate not that I'm judging but if you do want to kind of because it can be expensive Go to the cheaper hotels and, and gamble mm-hmm. because the, the smaller stakes. So, for example, in the win, the minimum stake might be, for example, I don't know, five or ten dollars on blackjack or, or like on, 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 on anything. However, if you go to some of the shittier hotels, which is still, still fine, Treasure Island, awful, but boss. What's the great? So, you go to for example, Treasure Island, Treasure, <laughs> Treasure, 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 Treasure Island, Island on the strip, on, by the win. The minimum oh, stake right. might be, for example, uh, two dollars fifty cent. Oh right, yeah. yeah. So be is a two dollars little cheaper. So what you and also never. I've I've been to Vegas four times. I've never ever went to a bar and bought a beer. I mean, like I've never bought a beer in Vegas. So gamble, 
and they bring you beer for free. Yeah, yeah. So my point is, if you're gambling, and the minimum, you know, thing is five dollars a, a chip, you, you're betting five dollars every few minutes. Yeah, yeah. It might be a, a pound. So if you can make your pound last fucking longer, you're getting free ale. So I don't know how much you like to gamble. I don't know, but yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'd, I'd for anyone else listening who goes to Vegas. You go to the cheap hotels if you want to get free beer, which I like free beer. Yeah, we so all do that. Beer. I would also recommend <clears throat> going down to Fremont Street. They call it Freakmont because it's mad down there. Is that where you got that photo with that homeless guy yeah, who says, homeless, homeless, face homeless drug addict who had a, 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 a sign saying, come on my face. For five dollars. She's about 65 years <laughs> of age. And Fantastic. she said, come on my face, which was a great, great photo. It's a real question. It's, it's, all, it's, <laughs> it's hung up in my fireplace. <laughs> Grandma. Yeah. Yeah. There's a guy down there who lets you kick him in the balls for $20. Um, they call it Freak Month. It's Do you know what? I really month. hope it's the same as when you went in February 20th. You know, like the busyness. and like, yeah, yeah. Obviously, well, it's not going to be international visit. Like It's going to be no, more US, busy. isn't it? But I don't we, know, you know. It will, lad. We, it, we landed... At like a level. Yeah, that your your think your experience is fight weekend. Nah, but Vegas be because even on Halloween weekend. Yeah. How yeah, maybe many, then. Yeah. How many yeah, people maybe. do you think are in Vegas who are from the UK? It's, it's a very small percentage, right? Is it mainly US? Mainly yeah. US citizens. There's yeah. Loads of them. Yeah. Oh, I'm so fucking jealous. I am jealous. It's the fucking best place. Right? It's Why the best place ever. Because I can't, for one. Yeah. You haven't got, I haven't got a work visa. I think you're getting kicked out of the I was going to Vegas, you see, kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of any other good tips. Um, go to the bar show, go to the sports room. There's TVs all over the place. So, number one, don't pay for a beer. Just don't, always, don't always ever gamble. pay for a beer, no. So, if you're at any you table, gamble, they will just mad, bring yeah. you drinks. Well, you you don't can have... do the same thing, like, you can go and bet on, like, there might be a hockey game on. You can bet on whoever's playing. Like, just no. a really low bet. Like, I'm no interest, I just want a beer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. And also, I wouldn't, I personally, I mean, I, I've never, I, I very, very rarely go to a casino. Just bet craps. I'd go to a casino and they they, they do uh, practices, like they do teachers. So they'll teach you how to play craps. Craps is the one that you see, you throw the yeah, dice. Throw the, and yeah. you, you don't, the only time you lose is if you roll a seven and you're all working as a team and you just start speaking to strangers. I, I never gambled on blackjack or roulette once in Vegas. I just played craps. Yeah. And cool. ends up in winning a few grand, to be fair. Me and my dad were up about four grand between us. Um, it was great. One of them would be all right, lad. So, I, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do... I wouldn't gamble on other than craps. Um, Depressed? Can we talk about vaccines or something? <laughs> <laughs> four weeks as well. Four weeks I'll be there now. So, well, it's, all, made, it's all luck. When you just take what you're prepared to lose and have a good time. <laughs> yeah, lose the lot. Yeah, best lose, lose like. the mortgage, yeah. everything. Yeah. No, honestly, I just take you know you take five hundred grand, two grand, whatever you're prepared to lose that weekend, yeah. and uh, and just fucking have a good time. Can't wait, mate. Unbelievable. Enjoy. Thank you so good much. Good to have you back, Tom. Likewise, chat. So yeah. for any of you who are asking about him, he is alive. Yeah. He is still a part of the anyway. pod. He's just fucking taking a back seat while he's living his life, living his best life. Me and Joel will hold the fort. Yeah. You keep getting paid. We'll just, we just keep knocking it off. And <laughs> uh, else you want to finish on, boys? No. no really enjoyed this, chaps. No, it's been nice to just see we can't continue the night. A few beers, you know. Mm-hmm. Keep going. Well, I can. But you, you can, yeah. You two can't. I'll go and stand on a booze on my own. I'm going for an Indian. I might join you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so best. much. Nice one. Cheers, on tracks, you. what's the code? Like 15% it. off. Leg it. Mm-hmm. Keep... Follow us, keep supporting us, keep okay. telling your mates about it. Mom Subscribe, tricks. like it. Do all the good stuff. We greatly appreciate it. We've got some big, big guests lined up, big plans for the new year. We've got some more Patreon offers going on, coming soon. Listen, we've got loads of ideas. Just keep supporting. We massively appreciate it. This pod's in its infancy. We're dead excited. We just need your support, which we thankfully got. So keep it coming. Thank you so much. Thank Ciao. You.